So, um, Patrick Dowling was asked about the, um, the council's plans for the square. And people, people will know that we've been out to consultation on a number of options around um, trying to bring more vibrancy back to Hamilton Square. Um, because we, we face the, the challenge of, you know, after kind of five o'clock, um, it, it, it becomes a bit of a ghost town. So how can we bring more vibrancy, more business, more visitors, more footfall back to that part of Birkenhead? And um, obviously we, we, we went out of consultation on various options. It, it was my view when, when I kind of stepped back a bit that I thought, and it's a bit like picking up the, the point that Paul has just made, we, we need to see um, the bigger picture for the whole of Birkenhead, not just one, although, albeit important, element around Hamilton Square. Because I was just making a note of the, the various projects that are in the regeneration pipeline. And I, I want to link that back to Kevin's um, presentation about what people of Birkenhead said were the highest priorities, because one of them was um, uh, encouraging jobs and, and investments back to the town. Uh, so that is clearly, so we know residents feel that's a, a very high priority. And, you know, we've got, we've got six or seven um, things in the pipeline, uh, one of which um, is the, uh, the plans that Neptune have got for uh, regenerating the area around Europa Pools um, along the model of, the, of New Brighton, bringing um, <coughs> quality um, restaurants back to, uh, to the town, having that offer next to the cinema, the, uh, a newly provided swimming baths, re revamping Birkenhead Market, making it a much, much uh, better offer, particularly focusing on the food, the, f the food offer. Um, so, and we're going out to consultation in the next couple of weeks, Neptune are uh, around that, um, those plans. So we've got, we've got that set of, of, of um, uh, measures around um, that area of Birkenhead. The council are talking to various developers around the Hind Street uh, area about what we might do there. Um, we've got the, uh, the new little store at the top of Oxton Road, which um, is due to start any, any day now. Um, we've got um, the Birkenhead Improvement District, which we talked about earlier on, which is going to invest half a million a year in additional um, sort of services to the town and improve marketing. And then we've got the whole uh, opportunities around Woodside. Uh, and just to reassure Steve, uh, we're already in talks with a number of um, uh, very, uh, very interested investors about possibly uh, looking at a mixed-use scheme in the Woodside area with a hotel conference centre at the heart, but uh, maybe some residential, but, but restaurants, uh, bars, offices. I agree with you, everything you said about the view over to, to, to Liverpool being, um, you know, uh, fantastic. So, rather than just um, do one, you know, the Hamilton Square scheme in isolation, I thought it was really important to link all of these things together in, in, in a kind of Birkenhead regeneration master plan, which we will do. It doesn't mean to say we're going to we're going to wait around. Um, so where these schemes can come to fruition now, like the Neptune one, we'll just get on with them. But I, I think we, we need to look at um, the opportunities, particularly of linking what we're going to do in the town centre in the retail core with Hamilton Square, through to Hamilton Square in the kind of office commercial um, core down to Woodside. So um, rather than doing this in kind of um, in an ad hoc way, this is a much more, I think, hopefully ambitious and more connected um, sort of vision for, for, for raising the uh, raising our sites in Birkenhead. Has Neptune signed? Uh, we're in a lockout agreement with them already, right. so so we are we are committed to working with them. I think for, a, for the, the next six months. Great. So, so that's the context in which we decided to, to, to put the, the Woodside scheme on hold. That money will go back into the coffers, so it's not going to be wasted. But <coughs> I, I wanted a much more ambitious um, vision, if you like, for the whole of the, the, the town going forward. So that was, that was the thinking behind that. But can I answer the second point, because it links you with, with Patrick Ards, about yes. what's happened to the trust for the Williamson. And there was huge enthusiasm for that. 
Um, and if you look now what's happening in Oxen Village, where, I mean, there is a proper nightlife. Um, uh, and one was hoping that that would spread down and, and engulf Williamson. Um, and I thought this was all going in response to the number of public meetings we'd had and the enthusiasm of a, a shadow trust board. And then I learned the officers had got hold of it, killed it off by shoving us in with um, Merseyside galleries. Um, so if we're thinking about the Woodside, into the square, up into the shopping precinct, but with all the Neptune developments, uh, up to Liddles, I mean, to, to have reinvented what Williamson does should be part of that. I agree. And look, I just want to put people, there's no question you know, the council will continue to 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 maintain, um, you know, the Williamson. So there's no question that that will be that will go. Uh, I think you're right. We've got an opportunity now to better embed that offer, if you like, into the the, the regeneration master plan. And I've still got an open mind on whether we take that forward by by the trust. I think that's still on the table. Um, but I think. I think if we don't if we don't connect it with the other things I've talked no, no. about, we'll be missing no, a trick. No, but can I make it's yeah. really on um, Steve's challenge, which I know the action group's taking up on the ferries. We have to rethink what can actually happen at the ferries. And the public sector of all its great qualities does not have those beds of skills. Um, just as um, the trust would have been able to draw on different sets of skills about the activities that could have been built around uh, the terrific Williamson Art Gallery, particularly the amount of money that the council and ratepayers and taxpayers have actually put into it. And I think um, the ideas that Paul's been talking about with the, the, the cafe development down there, of rethinking what the events that could actually happen at Woodside we need to be thinking that in lots of our public services. I agree. So, uh, yeah, uh, no, I, I agree. So, so they remain yeah. community services. They're not privatised, but we actually bring in different yeah. skills to run. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right, uh, Frank, and um, Anne can wax lyrical about this, because one, one of the skill gaps that I think we've got in the council is we haven't got commercial exactly. skills. We haven't, we haven't got um, the, the ability... In, in, in many of our services to, to think commercially and maybe generate income from a lot of the services we provide. And that's one of the yeah. things that Anne is in yeah, helpful for you. Absolutely, yeah, I do. Because uh, part of my portfolio now, Frank, is transformation. And the transformation agenda has got to be huge. I mean, obviously, with the never diminishing pot of, of public money, we've got to look at how, how we effectively deliver services. And we're going to have to do them in different ways. And different ways may mean, you know, outsourcing some services. It may mean community interest companies. We've already got a couple of examples with our um, adult daycare, where we've set up a local authority traded company with uh, our, all of our schools uh, services, where we've set up this company jointly with Cheshire West Essentials. They're just two. Uh, our neighbouring authorities are light years ahead of us. You know, Cheshire West has <coughs> seven companies set up already, they have a transformation team of 17 people and they brought in the best, the brightest with uh, commercial skills and acumen and they are really motoring on this agenda and saving millions of pounds along the way. Now we, we need to you know, get some pace and change into our, um, the, the way that we're going to develop this. It's very much at the ground floor at the moment but Eric as the chief executive is looking at this and uh, you know, working closely with us. This is an agenda I'm going to be driving on. So yes, we are going to have to develop those skills and bring in those people to look at all of the services that, we, that we're currently running. But if I can just pick up on some of the you know, stuff that, uh, that both Steve and, and Phil have mentioned about you know, developing the home of this, <coughs> the Birkenhead area, the Hampton Square area. We've now got a Wirral plan. We've got a Wirral plan with 20 pledges. The Wirral plan is a partnership plan where we've got our public sector and private sector, you know, in, in that we've got the chamber in there as well. And just, you know, picking up on what you said about ideas for future uh, work here within the, con uh, the constituency committee, uh, I think it would be really, really useful if we had, um, you know, our partners came along to this meeting and talked about what the plans for Birkenhead 
Right. What are the plans for Birkenhead within the Wirral plan? The Wirral plan is obviously uh, cover, going to cover the whole of the borough, but you know we could look at that in a micro in a microcosm. I think we could get you know if we could get Paula from yeah. the chamber to come along, yeah. and we could get Sue Higginson from the college to come along. We're talking about you know how we get how we get children and young people skilled, how we get those jobs, how we bring in the businesses. I think from that may develop a work <coughs> program for, for us as a constituency Great. committee. So um, it's a really exciting agenda, but it is <coughs> one that needs to move at a much faster pace. And you know, we, we politically we are driving that, driving it forward. I hope that's helpful, Frank. Before I bring very Alan, before I bring Alan in, could I just ask? There was talk some time ago of us doing joint services with. Ch Cheshire West, wasn't there? Yeah. Might we actually try and start our joint services? Yes, well, we do have this one. We, we have yeah, one. <coughs> we've got one, Ed Central, yeah. which is a, a joint venture between Cheshire West and ourselves delivering school services, like school improvement services, um, catering services, cleaning services. So they've been brought together. Fact, that was only launched on the, the, right. the December, 1st of December. But it's just these 17 entrepreneurial spirits. Might we not give a well, hands on some of those then. Yeah. We're working on it. Brilliant. <laughs> right, Alan. On it. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to pick up on a couple of points. Um, Phil, I think, rightly uh, talked about the fact that we needed a, 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 to look at this, the Hamilton Square problem in a, in a broader context. Um, but I think one of the problems that we get into, and it's a problem that we will continue <laughs> to get into, is that the Hamilton Square um, project was part funded out of the uh, Mersey Travel, out of the step money, um, where we were asked to put bids in. And in, inevitably, we often put in several bids in the hope that if we don't get one, we'll get something else. And I think sometimes we do have to be brave and take that overall and just put one bid in, which covers the whole, um, the whole project. And so we finish up with a meaningful project. I think that was one of the dangers of that. And the other point I'd just like to pick up is, is the point that, um, that Steve raised about, uh, I think it would, it's, this is some, this Hampton Square project, I'm not saying we shouldn't have a veto on this committee, but it should have come to this committee and been discussed here, uh, so we could have had an opportunity to comment on it. And I think maybe if we've done that at an early stage, we might have not got quite into the, the position we did. That's, we got three really good suggestions there. Um, one is that while the local authorities delegated us some money, they could actually start initially uh, giving us the preliminary uh, work on decisions. Um, so might you take that? Um, and is it about the, how the, the actual plans that are developing? Um, and Steve's point with Paul, which I'll bring in again, on how specifically do we link some of these new others and new skills to improving our community public services? Paul. Yeah, I, I just want to make I apologise in advance I haven't had the opportunity to speak to Bill <coughs> and, and Anna and, and Joe about this, but only just today, uh, Neptune, I've made contact with the Merseyside Pension Fund. And, uh, some of you will know that uh, the pension fund is looking towards make a, making local investment um, and <coughs> setting aside uh, funds for local investment. And as, as many of you also know, um, Merseyside has reached agreement with Manchester West and West uh, Yorkshire Pension Fund. So, uh, as my role as chair of the Merseyside Pension Fund, um, I'm going to make sure that we follow through on every opportunity for local investment. And it, it seems that that's starting to, to, to come together now. And we'll certainly look towards uh, talking to Neptune and seeing where you know, local uh, pension funds can be spent locally here on the world uh, before we take that ferry across the Mersey. And also, if you talk to Smiths, um, the, our local estate agency, commercial agents, they've got several properties going through for sale on uh, Hamilton Square at the moment. And uh, they, they, their comments to me are that prices have started to increase around the square. And that's a real positive thing. And so there is a lot of positive good news. And I think uh, within the next year or so, we'll start to see some real positive things around this, the, the square. Oh, it's right, isn't it? <coughs> actually, um, without 
any minister interfering with you can spend up to 5% of your capital, can't you, in investing in your local communities. Yeah, and I'm going to try and get you to spend the money here. Yeah. yeah. Very good, thank you. All right. Um, I'm coming back to other suggestions. We've got rather good doctor councillors at the moment. Phil, can you take us back to the question and answer session? Are we still on public questions? We are. We're, I'm taking Phil back to them. Oh, right, okay. It's just that somebody would like to say something. Is it on the questions we, we actually keep it in it some sense? It wasn't submitted. It wasn't yeah. great. We will certainly come back. Okay. Phil's looking after this section. Please. Okay, well, very briefly, the pre raised questions. With the, the first one we we've, we've, we've had was um, from Gilbert Sam about um, could, would, um, if the council would let rural credit union uh, use the one stop shops as collection points, maybe one half day a week in different one stop shops, and um, are one stop shop managers uh, looking at that? And we'll con contact Mr. Mr. Sam directly to discuss um, <coughs> that, uh, that proposal. So, um, so he should get uh, a, a response, hopefully, um, hopefully shortly and positive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second one was from Mrs. Robinson, um, and this is around um, dog fowl in Waterford Road. And um, the response from technical services um, is that uh, when the, there was an inspection found no evidence of, of excessive um, deposits of dog fat, but there were other um, uh, evidence of litter and detritus, so there's, there's going to be immediate mechanical cleanse of the area. The, the issue of um, members of the public acting irresponsibly, irresponsibly bound allowing dogs to fowl is, is a key issue in many of our areas. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at as part of the um, doing things differently on the council is using the same approach we've used to uh, really clamping down on littering, uh, uh, where we've had 5,000 fixed penalty notices in, in kind of four months, to use that same um, uh, organisation to do the dog fouling. Um, and and um, uh, the, the, the aim will be to get more prosecutions, um, much more difficult, I would suggest, with dog fouling and littering. Um, but well, particularly the people who got yeah. the dogs are almost as fierce as their dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we are we are going to use <laughs> use that same company to, to, to try and really um, bear down on the on the dog farming problem. So hopefully we'll see an improvement in that um, issue over the next uh, twelve months. Um, the third question was from Patrick Dowling, and, and that was the, the issue about the Hamilton Square scheme, which um, hopefully I've just. I've just covered, and then the Williamson Art Gallery question done. as well, which you, yeah. you dealt with. Um, I think that's it. So, so we go over questions from the audience, please. Um, we came to the constituency meeting last night. Can we go to your attention? Sorry. 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 S
if we could actually have George well, and I'll have a meeting if we can then feed it to all, you. All, all, all I can say is that I think last time we, we were here, um, I, we had a representative in the audience, uh, an officer from from Magenta, and the, the subject matter wasn't based. So uh, it was a, um, if we'd have had advance notice, I certainly would have made sure someone from Magenta, uh, a, a director of, of Magenta, would have come uh, to to answer head on your, your questions. The, the difficulty, I have to say, on behalf of um, all housing associations, they are in a very difficult state of flux at the moment. They, governments have changed legislation to the point that it's now very much like being, uh, being in the council because the cuts that housing associations are facing <coughs> are of a scale uh, which are, they've never faced before. You, you know that they, they've uh, basically instructed that there's a 1% rent, rent decrease in the next four years at least and to the tune of about 20 odd million pounds it, it, that's what um, Magenta are faced with so they are reviewing all current expenditure across all the services they provide and all the potential capital investments as well so it might well be that that you know, the review of the crossway scheme and I did think I have said in public that it certainly will be scaled back from, from the original scheme. And there has been a new number of consultations taking place on the form with residents and information gathering uh, to move to the next phase. But I, 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 have no, I, I don't believe that any <coughs> officer of, of the gentleman would turn up to a meeting with residents if, if requested by local councils. So I think that would be the next phase, the, best, the next move to do is get that you know, in writing get a meeting with, with, with someone who can give you the, the exact answer. We promise you that George and I will actually come and have a public meeting, um, see which one of the local councils are free as well, and then we'll feed that into Steve, who's on the centre board, and we'll take it from there. I think, um, is that right, George? If I, if I could just add to that. Um, I just want to query one point. You made the point about the, the reference, the letter that you got, and it was only one day to go. Have you had newsletters since then from Magenta explaining where they're up to, what is happening? That's, they that's, assured that's, me. That's, that's, what, what, that's what I asked for. I asked for um, to, be kept, to be kept in the loop, to be told, and we were told that almost certainly that we'd all know by Christmas. Right. Because we said, when we said, well, we just need answers, we just need, we need to know what's going on, we need to involve us what's going on. We'll be getting, because all we were getting was one page newsletter, <coughs> one page letters saying, um, Thank you for your patience and everything. Now we're getting a nice two-page okay. um, colourful one, but it's still not oh, saying anything. I'll, I'll, say anything. I'll take it up with Magenta and, and the three ward councils um, for, for the area as well, along with Frank, and we'll organise with Magenta uh, a meeting to give you the uh, up-to-date where they are. Is that right? Okay. I'll give you an assurance on that. But I mean, the framework, the financial framework, which Steve's um, explained is true, but we all know that all organisations have a good bit of pressure. Sometimes the priorities change. So we'll do our best through, through Steve to question at the length of time we've been in this position. It's, it's, um, I mean, we have been discussing that. It's been almost three years. I know it has. Yeah. And we promise you we'll do it soon. I mean in the month. <coughs> That's all right. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll meet. We'll have a public meeting with you in the, with, in the three councillors, George and your MP, within the month. All right. So can I leave you my contact? Yes, please do. Yeah. At the end of the meeting. Um, any other? It's really good. Any other questions from the floor? For us here. Um, can we then, if Bill, we finish with that? Can we go back to? You've absolutely been rather fruitful. Any other suggestions from councillors for future work? It's not specifically, but it is how do we pick up in advance issues like Steve's talked about, things that are going to come up that are quite big for Birkenhead. Can, they, can we get those referred to the cabinet members to Birkenhead so yes. that we know they're coming? Can I suggest that Joe, um, as the manager, tries to coordinate that? Yeah. 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 But it's, but it's Alan's point as well, isn't it? Um, it's not just, it's the bigger issues coming up. Might we have an airing here first? Mm. Uh, 
um, and that then forms a report back to the council proceedings when they come to make a decision. Yeah, in principle, yeah. 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 All right. stage of these committees because it's quite easy the easier task was to, but brave of the council to set up the four committees moderately easy to give us a modest budget much more difficult to use us as a preliminary stage in the council's thinking on issues which affect Birkin <coughs> and any of the other constituencies so I don't want to underestimate how important and how big a change that will require um, it's, it's a cultural change about how a council behaves, really. Um, but so I'm very anxious that we take this further, because it is the logical next step for this committee, isn't it? Yeah. And how it's done. All right. Um, any other suggestions, please? All right. Then I think the, missus, the committee's finished. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming.